Hi, I'm Catherine Yee, and I'm excited to tell you about our system, Penrose. The goal of the system, quite simply, is to create high-quality diagrams directly from abstract mathematical statements. Here is a very simple example of what this looks like. Someone types some statements about sets and set inclusions, they hit go, and automatically get a bunch of different diagrams. And beyond these simple examples, our system can draw diagrams from any user-defined area of mathematics and computer science. The challenge hmm. is that abstract ideas can be very hard to visualize. We've all had the experience of reading a textbook with lots of symbols and intricate relationships, and wondered, isn't there some picture that provides intuition for what's going on? Existing drawing and visualization tools don't solve this problem for a very fundamental reason. They simply don't help us translate abstract relationships into a visual representation. So we need tools that consider the larger process, going all the way from specifying a mathematical idea to translating it into a visual interpretation to making a final high-quality drawing. And that's the goal of our system, Penrose. Our system has two organizing principles. First, we treat the mapping from mathematical objects to visual icons as a first-class object. Such mappings are used to specify diagrams. Second, we synthesize diagrams by converting this mapping into a numerical optimization problem. This problem replaces the tedious layout process often performed by hand. Importantly, mappings are specified using domain-specific languages, which are carefully tailored to mathematical visualization. This language-based abstraction means that our system isn't just yet another diagramming tool but really a platform for building other diagramming tools and programs. A language-based interface also provides greater accessibility, separates mathematical content from its presentation, and makes it easy to make changes across large collections of diagrams, as we'll see later on. First, however, we'll take a brief look at related tools, take a deeper dive into our design principles, do a quick walkthrough of system implementation, and finally, show some examples of the system in action. So what tools are available for mathematical diagrams? And what would an ideal tool look like, assuming we just start with abstract mathematical statements? A few things seem natural to us. Input should look like ordinary mathematics. It should be possible to talk about any domain of math. Likewise, it should be possible to use any visualization you can dream up. There should be no artificial limit on how sophisticated the visuals can get. It should be very easy to make iterative improvements and effort spent on one diagram should easily generalize to future diagrams. There are many tools for making diagrams, but most of them just focus on turning a known visual representation into a final drawing. Consider, for instance, GUI-based tools like Illustrator, plotting tools like Mathematica, or graphical specification languages like Tix. All of these tools require an explicit specification of the graphical output, rather than an abstract expression of the mathematical input. So, diagramming can be tedious, and mathematical content becomes very hard to change once a diagram is complete. Some tools consider the larger process. Domain-specific packages like GraphViz turn high-level input into a picture, but cover just one domain and only a few fixed visualizations. Our goal is to retain the strong suits of existing drawing tools, while eliminating the more tedious aspects, the endless cycle of making minor changes. Most importantly, we aim to do so by bridging the gap between abstract ideas and concrete visuals. Now I'll take a walk through how our system was designed from the ground up to reflect the natural process of making diagrams from abstract logical ideas. I'll show how this results in a system that naturally meets those design goals that we set out earlier. The key insight is to look at how people make diagrams by hand and encode that process formally in the system. For example, consider the statement, there exist sets A and B such that B is a subset of A. How would a person map these ideas to a visualization? Well, they might naturally associate each set with a circle and each subset relation with a containment of two circles. They would then try to make a diagram that looks right according to their subjective taste by placing circles on a canvas and making iterative adjustments. Maybe this label should be outside the set. Maybe the label should be placed consistently. Maybe things would look better if they were spaced out more, and so on. So how do you encode this informal subjective process into a diagramming system? We split the process into two stages. In a specification stage, we model a diagrammer's internal mapping from math to visualization using essentially a set of formal substitution rules. In the synthesis stage, we model the diagrammer's notion of how good a diagram is using an objective function plus a collection of constraints that must be satisfied. Domain-specific languages provide a natural way to specify this mapping, and a compiler can then use this mapping to translate mathematical statements into a constraint optimization problem. From here, 
Numerical optimization is used to actually synthesize the diagram, automating the process of making iterative adjustments. Our end-to-end -end pipeline then looks like this. The input consists of three source files, a substance program, which specifies some particular mathematical content, an interchangeable style program, which specifies the mapping from mathematical to visual objects, and a domain schema, which defines the available mathematical objects. This code then gets compiled into an optimization problem, which is then solved to create one or more diagrams. To make an analogy to web design, Substance is like HTML, it specifies the semantic content. Style is like CSS, it expresses the layout and visual style using a set of generic substitution rules, which clearly separates presentation from content. And domain is like an XML schema, which specifies how content can be structured. The solver is like a web browser's layout engine, which produces the final document. The tech mathematical typesetting system provides another good analogy. Substance is like tech, allowing users to type mathematical content without thinking about how it will look. Style is like a tech package, describing how this content gets rendered. The tech layout engine then solves a dynamic programming problem to produce a document. Just as in tech, splitting the diagram specification between substance and style provides a clean division between novice users and expert package developers. Okay, let's talk a bit about the system details and implementation. As a running example, I'll consider how statements about sets get translated into simple Venn diagrams. These statements are expressed in the substance language, which resembles standard mathematical notation. For instance, in mathematical prose, one might declare objects, such as two sets, and assert relationships between them, such as containment. These assertions are concise and completely abstract. Here, for instance, there is no further specification of what a set is or what it contains. Substance programs look very similar. Their sole purpose is to declare objects and to assert abstract relationships among objects. Like math, substance is also compositional. Very complex relationships can be built up by declaring additional objects and a web of atomic relationships that must hold. The style language has a different purpose. It takes mathematical statements and translates them into a visualization. But instead of spelling out the details of a single diagram, the point is to define a general set of rules for translating math into diagrams. They also say which diagrams are good and what constraints they have to satisfy. The language shares a lot of basic features with CSS. Each style file is a list of rules, which use selectors to match statements from a substance program. Every statement that matches the selector triggers a block with declarations, which might add, say, a shape or a constraint to the diagram. Rules can then be refined by cascading, in other words, by adding more specific selectors and additional declarations. For example, let's say we want to visualize sets as Venn diagrams. We start with a generic rule, which translates sets into labeled circles. The for all keyword indicates that the rule gets applied to all sets appearing in the substance code. Each set is assigned a shape field that constructs a circle. The circle has some free parameters like the center and radius that will be chosen later by the optimizer. It also gets a text field for its label. The ensure keyword indicates that a condition must be enforced here that the circle contains its label. Likewise, the encourage keyword asks Penrose to try to keep the label close to the circle center. These statements will get translated into constraints and objectives by the compiler. The layer keyword simply says that the text should be drawn on top of the circle. An additional rule gives a visual interpretation to the subset relationship. Here we match in all pairs of sets where one is a subset of the other and add a constraint that the circle for the larger set contains the circle of the smaller set. Similarly, if sets are non-intersecting, we require that their circles be disjoint. Note again that for a given substance program, these conditions define a family of diagrams, and since the rules are generic, they can be applied to any substance program. A benefit of this approach is that if we want to change the appearance of a big collection of diagrams, we can just update a single style file rather than editing diagrams one by one. For instance, we could add some shading and shadows, then scale labels to the circle size to make them more legible. We can also change the visual representation altogether. For instance, if there are deeply nested subset relationships, then drawing these relationships as trees might be a lot easier to read. Here we just swap out the previous style with the new one, where set containment gets translated into a parent-child relationship on the tree. We can't anticipate every object or idea a user might want to diagram ahead of time. It's a wide world of mathematics. 
So we let users write so-called domain schemas tailored to a given domain. For instance, for this set theory program, we have a simple domain schema behind the scenes that models the available mathematical objects and relationships, plus any custom notation. For instance, this line, type set, says that we can work with sets. This line, predicate is subset, defines a relationship between two sets, and so on. These two notation lines enable users to write code that looks just like ordinary set notation for containment and intersection. Notice how a domain schema is purely abstract. It doesn't define an internal representation for objects, and it doesn't give an explicit definition to functions or predicates. Overall, this design empowers each user to adopt their own conventions and notation, just like they would when writing a paper. So how do we turn this code into a diagram? The first step is to apply the mapping defined in our style program to the given substance code, which we do by lexing and parsing the input file, then pattern matching and cascading on the abstract syntax trees. This process yields an optimization problem, described by a computation graph, an objective graph, and a constraint graph. We then solve this optimization problem for any unknown values, then output the final diagram. Let's take a look at each step in more detail. The basic task of the compiler is to apply a style program to a substance program to produce a computation graph. Here, for instance, the first set A gets translated into a collection of nodes that describe how to draw the set. Some of the values, like the struct width, are known at compile time, whereas others are unknown and will have to be determined by the optimizer. Another match on the first row creates a similar graph for drawing the set B. We also produce a list of all the unknown values, in this case the size and placement of the circles and their labels. A similar process builds up a graph describing the constraints on the diagram. Here, for instance, the statement that one circle contains another gets translated into an inequality constraint. Of course, the user never has to think this way. They can usually just type high-level statements. Likewise, we build the graph for the objective, which basically provides a measure of quality for any candidate diagram. Again, we translate high-level objectives, such as encouraging two objects to have the same center, into specific mathematical functions. Now the compiler has produced a constraint optimization problem that can be solved to yield diagrams. In our system, we use a combination of generic standard methods to do it. We start by initializing several random diagrams and picking the most promising ones. Then, to minimize the objective function, we use an exterior point method. This method is a good choice because it allows the solver to start with an invalid diagram and gradually make it into one that satisfies the constraints by converting constraints into progressively stiffer energies. We were pleasantly surprised to see that a quite generic method works well to minimize the resulting energies. We use gradient descent with LBFGS and a line search strategy that works well on non-smooth objectives. There is no inherent reason we had to use the exterior point method to solve constraints. It's just a reasonable choice for the job that worked well in practice. Taking a step back, diagramming as an optimization problem is hard but tractable. The challenge is, given a specification, how would one synthesize some diagrams that satisfy the specification via constraint optimization? This problem is hard because it's a meta problem. Unlike many kinds of graphics problems, we don't know the problem we have to solve ahead of time, because a style program could use arbitrary user-defined custom objectives and constraints. Also, since there are many valid diagrams, there often isn't just one local minimum. Many of the common objectives and constraints one may want to use in diagramming are non-convex. Finally, the objective can be ill-conditioned, because the many energies in it may behave differently, and it may be subject to many hard constraints. However, there is cause for hope. First, good diagrams don't need to be globally optimal. One only needs a local minimum, for example, just that the label can't be nudged to a better place. Next, as you can guess from these simple set diagrams, we only have a few degrees of freedom in diagramming problems just tens to hundreds, unlike, say, the millions of degrees of freedom often found in optimization for deep learning. Lastly, diagramming has a special problem structure that can be exploited by solvers, such as breaking down the diagram into subproblems. Finally, a local minimum of the overall energy function corresponds to a diagram. The final values are turned into SVG by our renderer. In our system, we focused on generating 2D vector graphics. However, in principle, nothing about our system design limits us to this particular target. For instance, the constraint-based approach is just as suitable for, say, generating arrangements of 3D objects that can be rendered via photorealistic ray tracing, or even interactive diagrams that could be used in virtual reality. Finally, we also provide a plugin system that lets us use external existing code. We talk more about plugins in the paper. 
Let's finally take a look at some examples from a variety of common domains in mathematics and computer graphics that can be generated using Penrose. In addition to our earlier example, showing how to change a style's visual appearance and representation, the language design of our system also enables it to automatically find different cases of the given substance code, helping with comprehension. The system can also optimize the other parts of the diagrams that are not spatial, for example, automatically finding colors that maximize contrast. Different visual representations of the same idea could help to scaffold a learner to move on to more complex concepts. Here we show styles that move from mappings between discrete points to thinking of continuous mappings on the real line. This example also demonstrates the use of our plugin system, as it calls an SMT solver to find concrete instances of these discrete functions. One obvious use of the style language is to just change the superficial visual styling of a diagram, much like CSS is often used to tweak, say, colors and fonts on a web page. For instance, if we've already illustrated the Pythagorean theorem one way, it's super easy to tweak it to different visual styles. The nice thing about making these tweaks in the context of the system is that these same changes can be automatically applied to a large collection of existing illustrations, just like you might restyle an entire website with CSS. You might also want to build up diagrams step by step. For example, if you're making slides for a presentation, we are able to do this in Penrose simply by commenting in and out lines of substance code. Beyond just changing the superficial visual styling of a diagram in a domain, you can also swap out the visual understanding of a set of statements. For example, any collection of geometric statements that doesn't assume the parallel postulate can be seen in several different geometries, Euclidean, spherical, and hyperbolic. Swapping out the style files allows users to build intuition by exploring how figures differ. The system can also automatically generate a gallery of alternatives, which makes it easier to find a satisfactory diagram. In math, one builds up complexity by composing simple statements. By simply writing mathematical statements, in this case illustrating the two defining properties of a linear map, we show that the style language translates the composition of mathematical statements into composition of graphical transformations with no explicit programmer effort. We also illustrate an alternative representation for vectors and scalars as signed and unsigned quantities on the number line, which allows the remaining dimension to be used to illustrate different concepts. It can be quite tedious to keep having to re-illustrate an idea when the real goal is to quickly prototype and explore the idea. Here we show how our system can illustrate the buildup of complex operations, in this case the simplicial link on meshes on the same example, as well as illustrate the idea more fully by automatically generating different examples, in this case input subsets and meshes. Since all mesh operations are performed by an external library, this example illustrates how Penrose can help visualize the workings of custom data structures. Much like a web browser creates responsive web pages, our system can create diagrams that respond to the viewport, even changing the number and layout of the objects in the diagram while preserving its meaning. Here we use a simple style program to create light path diagrams by jointly optimizing the scene geometry and the light path, as well as using a plugin to intelligently expand the regular expression according to the target output device and solve for paths satisfying a tricky specification. Although we generated these paths in style, a cool thing you can easily do is call out to an external ray tracer. We also did some basic performance evaluation, showing that our system appears to scale well with program size. The main bottleneck is optimizing diagrams with a large number of constraints and objectives, but even here most diagrams are on the order of tens of seconds, and there seem to be many opportunities for improvement. Splitting a diagram specification into content and visual representation appears to be critical for providing new capabilities. For instance, it makes it easy to evolve large collections of diagrams, and for novice users to benefit from the wisdom of expert diagrammers. A deeper insight is that in this context, the meaning of an abstract mathematical idea or relationship is totally determined by our rules for visualizing it. So diagrams produced using constraint-based optimization naturally reflect deeper facts about the objects themselves. We found also that numerical optimization provides a surprisingly general purpose solution to diagram layout. Overall, Penrose acts as a nexus for diagram generation, providing a way to connect diagram specification to diagram synthesis. We hope that our system can help make beautiful diagrams like these the norm, not the exception. To find out more about Penrose, check out our site. Thank you.